Hello friends, Tony here, welcome. Now here I have opened the Laravel project and let's see what, where this uh, page is coming from. Okay, I'm going to open the routes and inside the routes we have this web.php here we defined all the routes and here we have only one route. We have this route facade and calling the get method which means when we make a get request to this URL, so slash URL, port slash, we are going to execute of this function and this function is going to return a view welcome which mean is going to return a view which is inside the resources views and here we have the name of the page so here we have the welcome.blade.php here we have the welcome as you can see we don't specify the .blade.php just the name of the view and that's return this view so if I change something inside of this welcome.blade.php so let's say uh, let's say I'm going to select all and just add an HTML let's say HTML5 and here I'm going to add a h1 saying hello world if I come here and refresh now we have hello world here as you can see okay let's open the web browser and here we can return also a, a string if you want. So let's say just, or let's create a new route. So let's create a new route here. The same thing, route get. So when you make a get request, now here we have the slash. Here I'm going to say just test. When you make a re get request a slash test, I'm going to say just return a string test. And let's save. Let's open the project, refresh, and let's visit now the slash test. Hit enter. And now, as you can see, we have a test here. But just me let me add this one in the H1. Not hello world, but just test saying here. And now refresh, we have a test H1. Okay. You also can return, can create a variable here. So let's say dollar sign test variable or something else. Pass in the test and then we can concatenate that and display in the, ver the variable. So dollar sign test here. If I save, come here and refresh, we have test if I changed test uh, again for example and a refresh now we have test again here okay now this is for the get request so when we visit the slash test with the get request which is the default one let's see with another or I'm going to copy this one with a post request so the post request is typically when we uh, submit a form so I'm going to make a post request the slash slash here here we have get request and I'm going to create one for post request what I want so let's say uh, I'm going to use the request facade from Laravel and don't worry we are going to learn we need to import that we are going to learn about this request and for now just I'm going to say uh, die and dump the request all Okay, now on the welcome page, here when we make a visit, we return that welcome. I'm going to add a form here. So let's say uh, I'm going to add a form with action to be slash and the method is going to be post. Then we need to add the CSRF token, which is for protection uh, without an input and then not input, but just say button type submit and say in submit and also now we need to close the form okay so here we have an example of a form with the action the b slash for slash the method is post we added this csrf token which is for protection and then an input with type text and name name so the name based on the name we are going to get the request here so for example, I'm going to say uh, a username here 
and let's save. So when we make a post request, we are going to just dine down the request or he will define the post route. Now let's come here and refresh. Uh, we need to visit the slash home page and I'm going to zoom it a little bit. And let's say just a test for now. Hit submit. As we can see, we have a time dump. We have a underscore token, which is this CSRF token, as I told you, which is for protection. And then we have a username key with this test value. If I go back and refresh and update this. So for example, test updated, make a submit request. Now we have username to be a test updated, as you can see. Okay, this is for the post request, but also we have a put, patch and delete requests. So let's see also them. I'm going to make a put request. And the same thing, I'm going just to say dine dump request auth. Now let's go back to welcome and create another form. And here, this is going to be a put request. Now, uh, instead of saying here put request, because not all the browsers support this, what we can do is uh, after this one, we can say add an input with a type to be hidden. And the name is going to be underscore method and the value put. Okay, so we're going to override the method. And let's say yeah, submit put save. Come here and go back, refresh. Now we have this submit put. And I'm going to say just a put request. If I say submit, as you can see, we have a token, the method, which is a put and the username, which is a put request. So just to understand you, if I, instead of dying dump the request all, I'm going to return, for example, a string put request here, save. Now let's go back and refresh. Just type something here and say submit put. We had a return put request. Okay, let's go back and refresh. Now, typically, when we make a put request, we also need the ID of that. For example, if we want to update the post, we need the ID of the post. And we put that ID inside the curly braces here and we specify, for example, ID or slug on, or something like this. And here on the function, we are going to accept also the ID by saying dollar sign ID. And let's say uh, I'm going to return that ID now. So just assign ID, let's save and let's go back when we have a form with action. And here when we say slash, I'm going to add the ID, for example, the ID one. And if I save that and let's refresh here and just say put submit the put request, we have ID one. If I go back and change that to 100, for example, let's say come here and refresh, let's say submit. Now we have 100, so we get the ID we put here. And in real world projects, this is going to be a uh, dynamic, but for now we are going to stick with uh, this approach. Okay, now let's go here and instead of saying input type hidden, something like this, in Laravel we can just use the blade helper, which is a method and here we're specifying this is going to be a put request. Now if I save and just go back, refresh, submit the put request, we have the same result. Good. Now let's create one more for the delete request. Copy here and paste down there. And here we're going to specify this is going to be a delete request. And typically here we delete the record. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just receive the ID and return the ID. But in the real world, we are going to delete the post based on the ID. Okay. And then return some 
return back, for example. But for now, I'm going to just return the ID just to see you. So return here, refresh. Uh, let's go and make another form for delete. We have 100 method post now specifying the change in that the delete. And here we don't need the input, which is saying submit delete here. If I save and come here and refresh, we have a submit delete. If I click submit delete, we turn 100. So if we change that to 1000, come here and go back, refresh submit delete we have 1000 okay friends that's it for the web routes so here we have defined a get request when we visit the slash for slash the home page then here we have a post request for for slash then we have a put request for for slash also passing the id and the delete request passing also here the id and just return the id here Okay, friends, that's it all about this video. I hope you enjoy it. And if you like such a video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video, share with your friends, and see you in the next one. All the best. Thank you very much.